Um, but uh, it, it's exciting to uh, to be in a new year and to uh, just all the stuff that comes with that and all the fun that comes with that and, and the excitement that comes with that. So if you would do me a favor, uh, if you would take your Bible and open it up to Romans chapter 2. Uh, if you're using one of our pew Bibles, you will find them on page 1,113. And uh, if you want to go ahead and turn there, uh, we'll get there in just a few moments. Um, but uh, I just want to uh, take a moment to say thank you to everybody who uh, prayed for me uh, yesterday while I had uh, my grandmother's funeral. Uh, she was 94 years old. And uh, when we were kids, we used to make fun of her because of all the health food she used to eat. But apparently it paid off. So, but uh, let's go ahead and pray uh, before we get diving into God's word today. Um, let's pray together. Um, Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much. We thank you, Lord God, for your love and your strength. And Lord, I just love every chance that I get to share your word. And Lord, I just pray that you would move and speak today. Uh, Heavenly Father, we love you so much. And it's all of these things, Lord Jesus, we ask in your name. And all of God's church said, Amen. Amen. All right. Now, uh, we're going to talk about something today, and we've already been hitting on it a little bit this morning uh, in, 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 in Bible Fellowship. And it's a really popular thing uh, that people like to say and like to talk about. Um, but there's one thing particularly, though, that sours people about the church today. I could go through a whole laundry list of things, but there's one thing in particular. Um, but let's, let's, we're going to talk about that one. Um, I mean, you see this a lot of people saying this one thing a lot. You know, you look on Facebook, you look on Twitter, people are like, no, don't do this, don't do that. And, you know, people are always afraid that this one thing's going to happen. Um, I don't know if you know this or not, but some of the most watched daytime TV shows talk about this very subject. That, as a matter of fact, that since 1996, anybody remember 1996? Okay. Summer was born, that's great. Um, I was a junior in high school. Anyway, uh, but as a matter of fact, that since 1996, there have been 19 different TV shows that talk about this very topic. 19 different daytime talk shows or TV shows. Um, but we're talking about judgment. You know, if you think about Judge Judy, Judge Joe Brown, Judge Mathis, Judge Silencio Corbivore. Judge Wagner on the People's Court. Who remembers watching the People's Court after school every day? Okay, all right. Um, there's there, actually what's funny now is Judge Wagner. He's I, I think he's still alive, and he's actually done People's Court Pet Edition on the Pet Channel, whatever channel that is. But when we're talking about judging people and their pets, you know, it's what a, a, a crazy world we live in. Um, but have you ever heard someone say, and I can just see Tanya saying this, don't judge me. <laughs> That's on video too. That's a sad part. Um, but we've all said, you know, don't judge me. You see it on Facebook. You see it in all these different places. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. It's such a popular saying. But um, this one thing is people don't like is they don't like to be judged. You know, we like to do what we want to do and not worry about what other people are thinking. Sadly, though, it happens every single time these doors open and we walk in here, judgment takes place. You would think that the one place in the world would, wouldn't happen. Believe me, it happens. I guarantee it. We don't like judgment. Um, some of you might even be judging me now because of the topic that I've chosen to talk about. But uh, if you don't like what, what the Bible says, take it up with God and... Um, I'll pray for that for you. But, um, but it's an important topic. It's an important thing we need to talk about. Um, God's judgment is a righteous judgment. And it only belongs to Him. Um, as we continue on through Romans, we're going to see a lot of tough stuff. And, you know, there's, there's, there's over, I believe, over 13 or 14 different major doctrines in, in the book of Romans. And judgment is one of those things that it talks about. And it's, it's towards the end of the... I'm sorry, it's towards the beginning of Romans chapter 1. Um, but like I said, if you, if you want to go ahead and take your Bibles and turn there, uh, it's Romans chapter 2, it's on page 11, 13, if you use it in a few Bible. Uh, but Romans is a pretty easy book to find uh, in the New Testament. Uh, it's the sixth book in the New Testament. 
It's the first letter that Paul wrote. And the way you can find Paul's letters in the New Testament is really easy. It starts with Romans. It's his longest letter. And it goes all the way to Philemon, which is his shortest letter. So it's a total of, I believe, 14 books. Nine books written to places. Four books written to people. So it, it, Romans is a really simple place to find. It's the sixth book in the New Testament. Um, Paul was someone that knew a lot about judging people, right? His, his previous profession, he was killing Christi Christians, so he was judging people all the time. Um, but let's see, what, let's see what Paul wrote about judging. Uh, if you take your Bible, like I said, Romans chapter 2, and uh, we'll be in verses 1 through 8, and I'm going to ask that you would stand with me as we observe the reading of God's Word. Romans chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. You therefore have no excuse, you who pass judgment on someone else. For at whatever point you judge another, you are condemning yourself, because you who pass judgment do the same things. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. Some, when you were a mere human being, pass judgment on them, and yet do the same things. Do you think you will escape God's judgment? Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, forbearance, and patience, not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance? But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you're restoring up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath, when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will repay each person according to what they have done. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. Lord, speak through your word today. It's all these things that we ask in your name. Amen. All right, you can have a seat. I totally forgot to mention the slide. I apologize for that. Um, but the first thing we're going to take a look at today, the first thing we're going to talk about, number one on your, on your uh, worship bulletin in the back, is don't judge others. Don't judge others. And I say that in a very loud and commanding judge-like voice. I apologize for that. But, um, but number one is don't judge others. Now, you know, that is an incredibly easy thing for us to say, right? Incredibly easy for us to say. But it is so much harder for us to do. Um, we judge people all the time, don't we? You know, we'll, we'll be, you know, in a church, we'll be in a store, we'll be someplace, and we'll see someone walk in and we're like, how can they wear that? And I'm sure people say that about me when I go out in places, but, you know, people say, how can you wear, or how can they do this, how can they do that? You know, we all do it, we have, we all pass judgment on people. But the problem is, is that we have no business whatsoever passing judgment on other people, do we not? It's the old saying, you know. Be careful when you decide to point one finger at somebody, because there's always going to be 13 other fingers pointing you back. Which is, there's 13 fingers, that's a lot of hands, but I don't know how the math works, but there's always going to be, yeah, there's at least nine other fingers pointing back. I, I didn't do well in math, as you can tell, but don't, ju don't judge me on that. Um, but here's the thing, you know, if, you, if you're going to point out someone's faults, you know, what someone has done wrong, there's always going to be people that are pointing back at you. We have no excuse. And we have no reason whatsoever to judge people. Yet it has become a, na a national pastime. You know, it's something that we enjoy doing. At one time, you know, baseball used to be the national pastime. Not anymore. It's suing people and judging them. It's what we like to do. Because it makes us feel better about ourselves, right? We think that, you know, hey, someone is worse off than me. So I'm going to make them feel even worse. And I'm going to make myself feel better. We all do that, right? We all do that. Uh, one question I want us to ask and I want us to think about um, is judging other people make us feel better about ourselves, but we really have no business doing it. So why can't we judge other people? Look at verse 1. It says, You therefore have no excuse. You who pass judgment on someone else, for at whatever point you judge another, you are condemning yourself because you who pass judgment do the same things. We're just as guilty. We 
we are just as guilty of the things that we point out that our other people are doing. Um, it would be it would be like me telling someone that they need to really start watching what they eat. Well, I have a box of a dozen donuts in my hand. That's exactly what it's like. Now, I love donuts, as anyone can tell. But I have no right to pass judgment on someone telling them they need to watch what they eat while I'm shoving donuts down my own face, right? We, they're, they're, we have no right to do that. So why do we judge? Why do we judge other people? Uh, the sad part is, is that the reason why we continue to judge people is because we've gotten so comfortable with it that half the time we probably do it and we don't even know it, right? We're doing it and we don't even know it. It's become such a normal thing. Look at verse 2. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. True judgment only comes from God. Nobody else. True judgment only comes from God. He is able to judge us because He knows the truth of what we do and He knows our hearts. There is not one thing whatsoever that we can hide from God. We can't. He sees everything that we do. He hears everything that we say. He's everywhere we go. There's no way we can hide. God sees what we do. He, he hears what's in our hearts. He hears what's in our minds. No matter how much we try to put him, put, put him on the back burner, he's still there. He still knows what we do. He still sees what we do. His judgment is true because he knows us, he knows our hearts, and he knows our thoughts. God knows the facts, and he's able to judge us based off of those facts. Um, and he's the only one that can do that. We should not do that. We should not judge other people. You ever been in a situation where you like telling a story about someone or you're, you're you know, spreading a rumor about somebody but you don't have all the facts? You don't know the story? And when you find out that you don't have all the facts and you don't know the story, you feel pretty crunchy, right? I don't think people feel crunchy anymore, but you, know, you feel pretty bad about it. You're like, how in the world could I ever say that about somebody when I don't have all the facts? Now, you know, I know we just signed the resolution, and that's a beautiful thing, but some people might have been afraid to sign it because they don't want other people to judge them when they mess up or when they make a mistake. If anyone ever in this church ever judges you because you signed this, come find me, and we'll sit down with the Bible, and we'll set them straight. Because we as a church should be lifting up people that signed that. Because people are willing to stand at the forefront and be out there and say, look, here I am. I'm going to follow God. Wendy, I was crying with you a little bit. I'm not going to lie. All right? But, um, and don't cry now, please. That would be bad. <laughs> um, but, you know, we, we need to support those people and not judge them for when they make mistakes. Because you know what? We're going to make the same mistakes someday. We've already made it. Or, um, you know, just, we, we, can't, we can't judge people. It's just not a good thing to do. Number two. Judgment can be avoided. How many people in this room have siblings? Almost everybody has a sibling, okay? Um, how many times did you get in trouble and try to pass it off on your sibling or pass it off to somebody else? All the time, okay? All the time. Trust me, I have a brother. I was an expert at this, okay? I always try to pass stuff, and, and you know, even though I, 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 I try to get away with it, you know, I didn't because, you know, I was, I was the one that got in trouble. Look at verse 3. It says, when you judge, so when you, a mere human being, pass judgment on them, and you do the same things, do you think you will escape God's judgment? We think that we can get out of something when we try to take the focus off of us. You know, we think that if we point out another person's fault, that God won't care, or God will forget, you know, what we're actually talking about in the first place. People that are married, we do this in arguments. It's called, you know, pouring salt on other people's wounds. You know, when 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 my wife reminds me of things and I'm like, oh dang it, I feel like a jerk. But then I start pointing back at her or something else. That's not good. That's not a good thing to do. But we all do it, and that's judgment. Um, we can't.
can't, we can't hide from those things. Uh, we, can, we think we can point out another person's fault, uh, but we know it's not true. Look at Matthew chapter 7. I think I have something I know. Uh, take your Bible and go to Matthew chapter 7. This will take us back to the Sermon on the Mount again. Chapter 7, verse 5 says this. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to, to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. I truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. When we stand before our Lord one day for our judgment, we can't try to take the blame off of us. We can't. Chapter 6. Those, the Pharisees, when they were standing there, they were praying out loud, using these big fancy words. You know, they were trying to make themselves look better, but yet they were just, just as bad as everybody else. Because they were just trying to hide themselves. They were trying to hide what they got. They were trying to get away with what they were doing. And God doesn't care that we're pointing out someone else, pointing out someone else's faults. What he cares about is what's currently going on with us. When God does that, when he puts puts us in our place. He cares about the conversation that he's having with us. We shouldn't try to bring out other people's faults and other people's issues. What God cares about at that moment is us and the sin that's in us. That's what he cares about at that moment. No matter how much we can't avoid judgment, it's going to come. Look at verse 4. Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, forbearance, and patience, not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead to your repentance? In his kindness, God holds back his judgment. He gives people time to repent. Sometimes, though, we, we mistake God's patience for approval for what we're doing wrong. It doesn't work that way. God will not be mocked. Now sometimes you know, when Amy and I preach, or when Daniel and I preach as well, we use different translations. And this is the message. It, it's a little bit, I don't, it, it's a, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's just a different way to read it. But let me read to you from this how uh, Romans chapter 2, uh, verses uh, three, four, 3 through 4 read. It puts it in an interesting perspective. It says, you didn't think, did you? That just by pointing your finger at others, you would distract God from seeing all your misdoings and from coming down on you hard? Or do you think that because He's such a nice God, He'd let you off the hook? Better think this one through from the beginning. God is kind, but He's not soft. In kindness, He takes us firmly by the hand and leads us into a radical life change. Puts it in a different perspective, doesn't it? You know, next time, you know, God calls us out about something. We shouldn't take it off our. We shouldn't try to move the focus off of us. We should try to. I mean, we shouldn't try to put it off on others. When we evaluate our wrongs, it's hard. When we find out that what we've been doing is wrong, it's hard, right? We don't like to find out what we've been doing is wrong. But it's even harder at times to take those things to God because we're afraid of judgment. We're like, you know, I'm going to prolong this as long as possible. Um, as followers of Christ, we must constantly pray that God will point out our sins, uh, not for judgment, but to correct us. To do the right thing, to get back on the path with Him. Sadly, though, there are times, sadly, though, there are times when we are more amazed about God's patience with other people than we are when it comes to being amazed about His patience with us. Number three. Judgment will come. We all remember what it's like to get in trouble, right? Anybody get in trouble this week? Okay, all the students. Any adults get in trouble this week? Oh, one. Okay, that's good. Um, do you remember it, though? When we were dreading it, we would get really 
nervous about what was going to happen? Did your mom ever use the famous line, wait till your father gets home? Mom ever use that one? Okay. All right. And then when dad gets home, they're like, what's going on? Okay. Um, we always knew, uh, we always knew that when it was said, it was going to get bad. Uh, we like to hide that something bad is about to happen. Um, one time, uh, I had had my license, maybe about a year and a half. My brother and I, we had this really awesome car. It was a 91 Red Mustang and GT. I mean, it was fast. But my brother and I, one year, we decided to let the tag lapse. And so we didn't get the tags renewed like you're supposed to every year. And I was in downtown Louisville coming out of work, and I got pulled over by a local cop. And he gives me the ticket, which I so rightly deserve because I did not take care of my tags. And this is the first time I'd ever gotten a ticket. I was nervous. I didn't know what was going on. And so I waited. And I waited. And I waited. And all I had to do was take the money and go down to the courthouse and pay it and take care of it. But I waited even longer past the deadline to that. And I had to go to traffic court. I don't know if you've ever been in a courtroom before. It's a pretty scary place. All right? And there's like 35 other people around you. My brother's there for support, but he's not really supportive because he's just as scared as I am. But, you know, we're, we're standing there, and they call up your number, and you have to go before the judge. I paid it that night. I've never let my tags lapse, lapse again. Uh, but judgment is not something we can avoid. We can't put it off. We can't prolong it. It's going to happen. Uh, regardless of whether or not you're a Christian or not, we are all going to stand before the mighty, Almighty God one day. It's all going to happen. And uh, we will be accountable for the things that we've done. Uh, Christians will not be judged at the end of life, though, in the way that non-Christians are judged. Christians are judged by how we used our life. Whether or not we used it in a way to glorify God. Whether or not, you know, talents and gifts that He gave us, whether or not those were used properly. That's what we as Christians will be uh, judged on. Someday dads, and, and this is what kind of scares me about being a dad, um, but one day dads will be held accountable before God Almighty and how they raised their children. And how whether or not they taught them, taught them about the Lord. It's going to happen. Um, the Christian judgment will happen a little bit differently, uh, which I already talked about. Uh, for the non-Christians, judgment will be a lot different than that. Non-Christians will be judged for the life that they didn't live, but they will also receive double wrath because they rejected God. So not only will they receive the judgment for the life that they lived, but they will also receive double wrath. Now, when you go to like an ice cream place and get double ice cream, that's awesome. But double judgment, not so awesome. Double wrath because they turn their back on God. Those who refuse the love of God, the gift of God, will face a double wrath. Judgment is coming for both Christians and non-Christians. We can't avoid it. We live our lives for Christ. It uh, depends on how we go through. We can't hide from it. One day it'll be. Ha one day it'll happen. Um, I'll, I'll never forget this either. Uh, I was a kid, and uh, I was playing outside in the backyard one day. And, you know, my brother and I were playing in this big wooded area behind our house. And my grandfather gave me specific instructions not to play in a certain part of the yard. Now, my grandfather, he was recovering. I think he just had a heart attack not too long before this, maybe about a year or so before this. He comes running out the back door. Knowing that I'm playing in some place that I'm not. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to outrun Paul. It didn't happen. He caught me. I was sore. Judgment will come. One day, at the end of our life, we are all going to stand before God. And we're going to hear one of two things. We might hear, well done. My good and faithful servant. But if you're not a Christian, you might hear him say, Depart from me, you doers of iniquity. For I do not know. Heavenly Father,